Big baby. Huh. I said I float like a butterfly, I sting like a bee yeah. I've been having conversations with a bunch of nobodies And you can tell them what's the topic, they gonna talk about it Alright Alright man, so you're not tuned in to the Hey Not Podcast A yeah. conversation with a bunch of nobodies And I don't know what episode we on, I'm not really worried about that right now Second Sir. season something, I don't even know But uh, the good thing is, uh, we got somebody who I remember, oh, Jay, can you just put that down? Um, somebody who, when I was coming up, everybody knew. You know, of course he was known for basketball, but he was also known for being a good teammate, you know. Always chill. Man, we got my boy Shigari, uh, yeah, yeah. which I feel very fortunate to have because I, I haven't seen many interviews or sit down you know with uh with shigari so i think you know i'm fortunate you know to have him here you know shout out to, to ty you know for setting that up as well Big shout so out. before we get into the uh shigari journey <clears throat> we're gonna get into a few topics man real Talk about quick. what we were talking about real quick with, with, the, with the kimba topic let's get back in let's get that's into that's what you guys wanted to talk about yeah uh, man. who was le- so you guys feel who was it that- so, so our production manager okay Drew, break it down has a position that um kimba walker two hundred dollars two 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 million dollar player or not two hundred and four million dollars he's gonna be a free agent his max uh he can earn or by the Hornets, five, year to five years, two hundred and four million dollars. Our production manager Drew, his position is that if he's Michael Jordan, he does not give Kemba Walker two hundred and four million dollars because he's not a real number one option. Drew, what is your position? Wait, 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 wait. Shigar, what's your what's your what's your mm-hmm. position first? Yes, let's go to our guests first. See, my my whole thing with it, it was you know as we was discussing it before. <clears throat> if you want to give him 200, you can't really get nobody else to help him win. Facts. Right? So I was saying he should take half that, get another star, and some, you know, man, some role players and try to build a team that way. Okay. Because if you give him 200 in a, in a market like Charlotte and you just give him 200, unfortunately, they're not going to win with that team because you can't get nobody else. They're not gonna win. Nobody's gonna play with them anyway. Either. And ain't nobody. Either. So you trying to say it gotta be kind of like he got a balance too? Bro, right? There gotta be some type of balance because what what is he getting now? Forty four. Forty four. Eleven million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah, getting, yeah. all right. So now, I mean, even though God, like you, like you mentioned, God's like you know, my yeah. colleague's getting one hundred fifty. Lowry. Take 100. that hit. Lowry a hundred. Well, I really, all right. I'm a playoff team, though. So what would you rather do? Because he has a team. Yeah, so what would you rather do? You just said on a playoff team. What would you rather do at this point? He was part right. of are, you, are you taking that 200 and possibly it's not make the finals right. ever in your career? Or are right. you going to take that hit That's over? it. And try to get some players to surround you. Oh, right. All right, all right, all right. Also, who, 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 who's, that's who's giving who's giving Kimba Anybody. 200 mil anyway? Charlotte. Besides Charlotte. Bro, he besides besides Charlotte. I think Charlotte who, 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 and I, I, I didn't even up with money. All I'm saying is, all money. I'm saying is, I got the Knicks with money. could do the same thing Kyrie Irving and all of them is doing. Kyrie better than I don't give him a team. Man. You, you know I'm what? Saying. I agree with my man Ty because you gotta understand it's all so about positioning, Kyrie, you know, and it, situations. It was, you know, Kyrie. Kyrie was put in a great situation, uh, Brown and everything. Kyrie, Kimber could win with LeBron. Kyrie. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They didn't want to see that, Jay. That's that's why I agree with Drew. He's he's not the max player. He's not, he's he's not the max he's not, player he's not, on that he's team. Not he's not, he's not the he's not the number one. He's not the max player on that team. He's a he's a great number one. Kimba better than Devin Booker. Devin Booker's twenty one. How much money he got? Yes, in Kimba, come to New York. He got one million. He got like New York. Devin Booker's number is twenty one, bro. No, you gotta understand, bro. That don't give niggas shake. It's politics. Let me drop seventy two. Y'all talking about what your fucking day? Look, Drew, drop seventy two. All right, Drew, but all right, but look at look at his stats, Drew. He's produced. He's produced enough. I'm not saying he deserves that money. Yeah, but they cheated. Kimba got fouled when when Jimmy Butler. They got fouled, bro. Come on, I like Kimba Walker. 
I like Kemba Walker. Me too. But he's not a number one and, option. And he I'm might be worth two hundred mil. And he's not top. But just you right. But but, but not just not not, 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 not not that's a that's I a whack just, situation. You if you get some money there, it's not just talent speaks right. for itself, bro. Well, what other Go team would be would he be a number one option on? No way. Uh, I um, think if if like the if, Knicks, the um, <laughs> but he would he he, he, oh, he could be number one, but he yeah, yeah. Not, not, winning, not winning, not winning. They gonna win. They gonna win. Like, if the Knicks, if the, if him, him, nah, 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 nah. Him, nah, 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 nah. Shaq, that's my man. That's my man. But don't do that, Shaq. Who's my? I hate the Knicks. I hate the Knicks. Don't do that. Yo, you gotta stop hating on the Knicks, my nigga. Who's my? Will be number two. Knicks. Pazingas. Kimba. And if they're able to keep Cam, no, none of them have give them all the guards. Terry, I mean, Terry, 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 the Warriors. Nah, that's that's, that's the Warriors right. a super team. No, I didn't say they would win the whole thing, but they would have least compete though. Team, right, bro. Come on. They right. go and compete. They got five. They got six all stars. So you want him to get two hundred? Not two hundred, but a hundred. He give him. A, oh, nah, they're gonna give him the four years, hundred and fifty six, bro. What's I'm, wrong with that? I the number two. I'm giving it him. Number one, I can't give him that brand, bro. What's I'll wrong with four I'll years, one fifty six? I'm not saying no more. That's What's wrong? I said the franchise. That's not. That's not good. That's not good enough. The face of a franchise. Yeah, you saw them. He took the Steph, yo, to the yo, playoffs. Do that. They lost to the Heat. They lost to yo, LeBron. Yo, you're about to change he, topics, yo, because Drew's getting me tired. Yo, now he's gonna say he's a whack franchise. <laughs> then is a all right. So you understand? Wow. The Hornets are all right. Okay. The Hornets are a historic franchise. Okay, okay let me. I let think so. Bro. Bro. Larry Johnson, not historic. 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 In eight years, how many chips? he scored more points than Kyrie. He had ten thousand points for Kyrie. How many chips the Hornets got? No, no, no. What? Is it his fault? That's why. That's why. Yo, yo, bro. but they got a black ass team, man. <laughs> wow. Alright, I just said that you said I'm fucking playing yo, you right now. Yo, shut up, yo. I don't want to talk to you right <laughs> you now. You see? Yo, we switching up. Gil. No, we gonna switch bro, it up, man. Fuck that. I'm tight. I'm tight. I'm tight. Let's go. 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 Let's all right, so one thing that I, I did wanted to get into, and I think we'll just jump on on this, then we um, get into um, Shigari real quick. I kind of want to touch on something serious. And Drew, I know uh, you having you know a, a kid. I want yeah. I want I want, to, I want, to, I want your you know, input on this. As well. shit? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, recently, I'm pretty sure some of you guys you know heard or watch of. Apparently, what's going on with R. Kelly and what R. Kelly's sick ass has done. So, I kind of want to like have just a little discussion to see how. Let me say you know, what some, so, See how, how some of you guys felt, you know. But go ahead. Who y'all blame more, the parents or R. Kelly? All right, we could go around. We could. All right, we could simple, go around. Simple. Who y'all blame all more? Right, we could go around. We could go around and. I, I had this discussion, you know, with Shaq. I had it with Jennings. I actually had it with Jennings yesterday. That's, a, uh, that's as far as far as the blame as far as blame, I'm putting blame on everybody in yeah. this situation. No, no, I put, no, 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 but it's it's hard for me to I put the blame on the parents. I do blame number them, one, you know I and I do to even a lie your kid with that grown ass man. You're right, because I had this I had this conversation. I had this conversation, you know, with my brother. Like he, my brother was like, "Yo, that's like my niece running up to us saying she gonna go to the studio with Chris Brown." No, the fuck you ain't. Not by yourself. You know, so it's, I took that into account. Um, so I do think the, the parents are to blame. I also think, you know, um, the people around R. Kelly are to blame. You know, I blame him. Um, he was with, with, sure he was with Jai at that time? Oh. Jai Records. And he's been with RCA too. You know, I bl- I don't understand how the hell he's still with RCA. You feel me? I still don't understand. Still he did, he, did, God, he, he damn, yo. You, money, you said money, you that something disappeared, bro. He was yeah. doing a show. Yo, I don't know if you watched it. So, so you, no, it was two days ago. He celebrated his birthday, and he's in a club, and he's singing, and everybody's like this. They singing his song, and I'm like, yo, it's just like 
it's just a sick world because like I was going back to, you know, I blame, you know, his labels, you know, his friends, you know, his counterpart because like what you said yesterday, if I have a friend who's a stature, you know, mm -hmm. and I see him doing something that's out of pocket, yeah. you know, that it's just not morally right. I'm just not going to look at you and say, I right, continue doing that, you know, yeah. I'm going to check you like, yo, fans, like. What you doing? Like that shit is no. If we're at no, let's keep it a thought. You know? If we see any one of our ball player friends who are in the league, I come visit you, and there's a bunch of high school girls in the crib. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck is going on here? That's, that's space jail time, bro. 100%. So, so I told Kev this yesterday. Not only do I blame his management team as inner circle, I think they participated in. Yeah, this of shit. course, hundred percent. They of course big fact. because let us you play D one. You hope we've all been around people. You on the road. Everybody's bagging joints. Adults. Just be clear, Cam. Right. Adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's bagging joints. There's not one guy bagging five joints and we just sitting here just looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he wasn't doing what he was doing by right. himself. Yeah. The manager, the engineer, the A and R, Entourage. the road manager. I feel like they participated. Yeah. Gary, let me let's get your take and then um Shaq, uh we finish it. We go back to you, all right? All right, bet. What's your what's your thoughts on that, man? Oh, for, like you gotta understand, unfortunately, that's some grown men's preference. But that's the sad truth, right? Now, me personally, like will I I'm not, like I'm a grown man. I'm not gonna for me, there's nothing a girl of those ages can do for me. You understand what I'm saying? So that's, I wouldn't even, but unfortunately, due to whatever circumstances that that dude might go through, not just R. Kelly, but they, he's not the only dude in the world that's doing yeah. this. I'm just saying that the reality of the situation. Yeah. He's not the only dude. Mm -hmm. Is it fucked up? Hell yeah, it's fucked up. Because if you know I'm saying, I don't have children, but if I did, I'm like, yo, like I, I want to bring him the pistol. Like, what, what we doing? Right. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? No but you're right, but it, it is on the it is on the, 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 the parents too. You know what I'm saying? Right. I gotta make sure I know where you at a, you gonna wear? You wanna check who? This nigga's a grown, grown ass man. Nah, right. you ain't go nah. But, but unfortunately like that you got situations to where the parents ain't in their lives, so it slips through the cracks. Facts. And so these things happen. Facts. And that's the unfortunate truth of the whole situation. Big fact. You got you got grown dudes who are sick, and they you know what I'm saying, and they and they go after these young girls, knowing damn well they shouldn't. The you know what gets me it's, Harvey Weinstein, you, all of them. You know what gets me a little bit? No, you know what gets me like really upset? No, yeah, really upset. It's just that we kind of we knew about this. We I don't did. care what you say. Like shit, I we still remember like years, Dave Ch like Dave Chappelle. Like I still remember. And like making fun of uh of the situation and, and bringing it you know to light. Pee on you. So yeah, the whole pee on you situation. So it's like I felt like we should have we should have did something then you know, but it's just crazy like to me it. how he just comes up with like a few hits and all of a sudden like we forget all the shit that he's done and yeah. and that shit I don't know it was just it's just wild to me. Shut up, go ahead. I think I think that documentary man that shit showed us all that we all should we all got something to do with that shit. We could blame. We could. We could all point fingers, but we all got some blame in that shit. We. Were, I remember being there, like, like at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm 16, 17 years old in school with 16, 17 year old girls that don't really give a fuck about this situation. I, I, I remember even before that when the Aaliyah situation came out, and I was like, "How the fuck is, you know, how the fuck y'all listening to R. Kelly?" I had an older sister. She is listening to R. Kelly. She she was putting me on the information about R. Kelly, and still listening to R. Kelly. She it wasn't no big protest about R. Kelly. I remember I remember teachers, you know, still making you everybody know, R. Was Kelly. Every, in the name you of still like, not, not even not we're even all but, but we're all not, I'm talking about T. P. Two fat like right in the time when the sex tape came out. The same year he performed at the Olympics, which I That's think worse. is how much of a mind fuck that 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 he had over yeah. over the whole world. But there's there, there's a lot of things to unpack in that documentary. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's also it was a thirst 
to 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 make him a star and how many other people was going to make money off of him becoming a star and and I think that blinded people to the whole situation it was our infatuation with wanting to see a black person make it and become a millionaire we didn't see a lot of a lot of that so we wanted to see that so we was willing to look past a lot of things you know to say all right this this nigga is going to be a star but he, you know, I, I say this to say, R. Kelly is a monster. You know, facts. R. Kelly is a is a hor horrific monster, <laughs> and and I say that to say, you know, we could we could place the blame on the parents, but his parents had a lot to do with his situation growing up too. Mm -hmm. He was molested as a child. He he, you know what I'm saying. He he went through some things that was never sought out again. No excuse, bro. No, there's there's, there's people who get that shit happens to all the time that. But but around on talk to the girl. You, you know girl. why you know and I know people are gonna say that there's no excuse, but the reason I the real reason I brought it, it, it up is a factor though. The real reason I brought it up is because you have those girls are making a decision too. They know right from wrong too. I don't I don't care. I don't care what you what you say. You could be you could be manipulated, but in the beginning, all of these so called children no right from wrong. At 15, 16, you know what the hell you was you, doing. You bro. exactly. Yeah. And, 15, 16, and, 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 you know not to be with a and, 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 and 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 I'm gonna and I'm gonna and I'm gonna you know stretch it no. to, 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 to say to the point that like yes, R. Kelly is a monster. He definitely used his fame and he used his position to to lure a lot of these girls in. But you know what else he used to, to really trap them? The fact that he was molested. A lot of these girls were a, a victim of um, molestation before R. Kelly. And that's why it was so easy for them to 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 to, to fall into his trap because To mind he, fuck him too. Yeah, because he used his situation that he mm -hmm. went through to, 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 to make them feel comfortable. It's like how can somebody that was molested and, and was taken advantage of like me do that to me and then you don't realize that that you know that nigga's doing that shit to you but it's a it's a it's a lot of situ it's a lot of you things and, music stuff? and i can't well, and i, I won't sit here and, and on the people one it's, one last it's hard thing. to listen to it the same way you know what what you still it's on the people that's oh, reacting yeah. and still loving r kelly if we separate the music from the person that's what Don't I, cut my head off, but he I'm makes good music, yo. Okay. 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 Right. 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 I, I'm glad, I'm glad that y'all brought... Made good music, I'm bro. glad that y'all guys brought that topic up about separating... Uh, Art from the... Art music. And the reason why I said is because, again, me and Shaq had this conversation. Um, and Shaq was like, yeah, you know, I can't separate... There's some people, you know, that can do that, and there's some people that can't. So I had asked somebody else that question, and the person told me, for me, it's kind of hard to do that, you know? It's just hard for me to do that with R. Kelly because I know some of those songs came from those experiences with those situations, you know? So that's why I can't separate the art, you know, from the man because the art, you know, came from... So you won't hear but that's the media. No, no, that's... No. No, let me, no, let me, I'm let done with R. Kelly. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. My sister, my sister said something funny about, about no, the media. No, 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 that's going to be, we, gotta listen to Mike. Yeah, we, can, we don't question, know nothing on Mike yet. Oh, Once the Mike that. documentary yeah, come out, then we'll say something. Yeah, 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 I want to play, yeah, this one coming out on that Sunday. When I see it. Wait, let For the sake of conversation, I want to play devil's advocate. Go ahead. That's what I'm trying to do. I know I want to play devil's advocate a little bit, right? Just for the sake of conversation. If, like, if it was a, if we, you know what I'm saying, if it was us, like, young man, in yeah. high school, and I was a much older female, would that be ridiculed as much? Not an not community. No. I, I'm, I'm just asking. Not an community. Not an community. I'm community. just asking. No. So if we, if, what I'm saying is, if, like, we have to look at it from both ends. I'm not saying it's right at all. But if we're going to condemn this, we have to also condemn that as well. We big that up, bro. We big huh? that up. No. That's what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. Yeah. We condemn, we, I mean, we, 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 we big it up. When we 17 and we bag a 25 yeah. year old joint that shit is and she's bad as hell, she got a whole car and all that. Yeah. We're like, what? Yeah. Yo, you doing your thing, right? But with a female, it's a different story. You know what I'm saying? So we, all I'm saying Yo, I have is, a daughter. I understand. Just, that shit is nasty. Yeah, so let's just, but, you know what I mean? No, I, I totally understand. Cause yeah, he he brought saying. up an interesting point and I said I wanted to write an op-ed about this. About dudes with older chicks? Yes, because my philosophy about that, same way... You think that's nasty? No. 
I you don't think, think it's nasty at all? <laughs> Hell no, bro. I'm 17 <laughs> and a 24 year old shit. I'm just give me some. I'm not going to say that. Word, 25 years old. Yo, I'm about to. So she cooks your own place. I'm in there. It's lit. It's lit. I was a thinking about, I think, and, and, I, and, and, I, and I also, I think y'all thinking about all the like, good situations that that was. You know what I'm saying? Like that, I mean, I was like, I was the man, like. Yeah. It, but women do that to control. Mike is nasty, bro. People love Mike. But, y'all think about but, the good situations. I was just playing boys, devil's advocate to look at the whole situation. That's you don't what. think he was playing with little boys? No, we got it. Cuddling with them? Because He said he cuddles with them. I actually think that. I don't think he raped kids, bro. Oh, yeah, I, yo, you know, yo, bro, <laughs> you know, nah, bro, that's just crazy. I'm gonna lie, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. Yo, keep it real, real, keep it real, bro. You know what it is, yo. When but you we see don't, it, it no, makes it worse. But we don't. Nobody cared until the documentary came out. Nah, man. Nobody did. That shit went right out. Listen, oh, like, 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 about and like so I said, if there's a, a Mike Jackson, you it know, documentary, you hear him, I'm not hearing Mike chilling and stuff. Nah, but, uh, not even gonna Garvey, going back, going back to what you, you were what saying of, of, in regards to you know the whole devil's advocate. Another thing we and you that and we it keeps about. the story going. You can't forget that the media yeah. did nothing about this. That's why you can't you can't turn his music down because you then you'll forget worse. that the media don't care about what these these little girls. It wasn't just it wasn't just R. Kelly that he didn't care about these little girls. Job. Nobody cares. Yo, about all them rich girls. people was messing with young girls. They nasty dudes Still, in the industry. So, day. so oh, what, I, I, what I was gonna say was uh, going back to Garvey going. Um, that was Kamori Lee was seventeen. Um, when she got with Russell like Simmons, right? Like forty-seven. Yo, can I can I say what I? And can that's say not when she met him. Oh, uh, <laughs> but we also gotta take a, into account that when different cultures, different countries, you know, this is regular. Some of these things, you know, you know, it's, it's common in different cultures, you know, so I, me dealing with the Department of Education, you know, I know some students that, you know, that they was married, you know, at 12 years old, you know, rite of passage and, and all that stuff, you know, so I, it's, I get what you're trying to say, I, I, so I could see like the whole, I see it from all angles in a sense. Hey. Um, and you think and, and you think this that whole like when they tell when girls are growing up and they tell them that you ma- you mature faster than guys. I think that I think that mind fucks a lot of little girls too. You feel me? You can't go around telling little girls, "Oh, you mature faster than guys." Like, yeah. And then when girls yeah. start messing with guys, like, "Oh yeah, he doesn't understand." I'm I'm saying this because I seen it. I, I seen you saw the documentary. Little, I seen the documentary. I think with that you gotta add context to it. Like when you tell them that, you gotta add context to it and understand, but it, but do, understand but, why. But yeah. do they people as a parent? But do but like, I'm I'm gonna explain it to you. I I'm, I got two little sisters. You know what I'm saying? And it's 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 very hard because at that time you're trying to explain to them like your your body may be maturing faster and all of that. And you're not trying to explain to them the sex side of it. You know what I'm saying? And, and dating and all of that. You know because they still. You know, not even really I'm teenagers, sure. some sure. girls when they go through certain situations. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to get into the Shigari, man. So, Rice High School, Kentucky University, uh, Manhattan College, professional basketball player, travel the world, Harlem Globetrotter. Uh, now, you know, does, does a little salsa. Salsa dancer. Big time. Big time. He's also a motivational speaker, you know, also helps out the youth, man. And the one of the reasons why I wanted to get him on was don't forget the ball. It's like a busy. Oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Oh, 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 so yeah, man, I, I wanted just to chop it up with you. Like I said earlier, I understand you really don't have sit down with people. Like I said, I haven't even seen you. You know, it's, yes, it's yes, been a feel long time. To you know? So, I, like I said earlier, you know, it is an honor. So let's get into it, man. Basketball. How did it all start? <laughs> How? Who's, who planted that seed? You know, what made you say, "Hey, I want to pick up," you know, this basketball and put it in the hoop? You know, what's what? What got started? You know, I did that stuff. Seven for, for, for me, for me, it was. Um, <laughs> I got an older brother, right? So okay. we, you know, he's a lot older than I am. Um, so he started. Was tall. He started playing the game. 
uh, before I did. And growing up, I, you know, that's my older brother, so I, you know, I, I looked up to him. You know what I'm saying? And he started playing the game first. So you know, I would go and watch. I would go, like basically anything he did. I wanted to do. You, wanna you know what I'm saying? It. But basketball is something that stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? That was the one thing that he did that I was like, I bet I'm gonna do this too. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So that's that's what it was. So and he's the one that actually got me on my first team. He's the one. He's the one that got me in the park. You know what I'm saying? Just doing different things. So my older brother's the reason. I mean, he put that ball. You know what I'm saying? He didn't literally put the ball in my hand, but he got. Me watching him made me want to do it, and then after he saw the interest for it, he's like, "All right, cool. I'm a, I'm a situate, put some situations for you so that you can." So it wasn't something that I'm a, I'm gonna force this on him. It was something more like I'm gonna show him and see if he like it. He like it. Right. I mean, but yeah, like I wasn't forced to play the game because I mean, I, I didn't like me. I was a, I was kind of a late bloomer. I didn't start playing ball until I was nine, ten years old. So was you playing like other? Was you interested like in other sports? As was you doing any other sports at that I time? I was just a regular kid. Yeah. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I was just a regular kid. I wasn't. I wasn't doing anything. I was just regular. Kid. I'm watching TV. I'm going out in the park. I'm riding my bike. I'm doing stuff like a regular kid. kid doing. I was just big. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, what and at what height was you at nine? I don't remember. It was, it was, he was taller than everybody. But just just know that I was taller than everybody else. I was about to say. Your you know brother was tall too. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, the, you know, like going back to that, you asked me what started me. That's what started me, right? And then, you know, like like all things, like when you when you do something long enough, you start to like it, and then after eventually you start to love it. You know what I'm saying? And that that's what it was for me. So the game, you know what I'm saying? And the game, fortunately, has allowed me to do a lot of things that I probably wouldn't be able to do without the game. So you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, so how did you end up uh, going to that powerhouse, Rice High School, Harlem? Mo, Mo came out, Mo, Maurice Hicks came after me, Coach Mo Hicks, he came after me. He like, yo, he saw me play like the seventh grade, he's like, oh, I want him. Now mind you, I live in the Bronx, <clears throat> right? Shout out to the BX. I shout out to the BX. Right. Shout out to the BX, always, I'm from the Bronx. What part? Castle Hill. Okay, okay, I'm, okay, big I'm shout right out. down the block, <laughs> hear me out, I'm right down the block. From St. Raymond's, it's right there. Oh, oh, you see right there? Okay, okay. I'm walking distance from St. Raymond's. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to their camps and all that. You know what I'm saying? How the hell did that happen? Yeah. Now look, now everybody asked me that question, like, yo, like, how that happen? You ain't go to St. Raymond's, but you go to Rice. You know why? Because Mo, pers- Mo Hicks pursued me a lot more than Gary DeCesar did, unfortunately. Gary DeCesar, I mean, no disrespect yeah, to him, no, 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 yeah. but he played more of a laid back role. Like, he just expected me to go there. And I was like, eh, like, you know what I'm saying? I, look, I'm human just like everybody else. I want to feel be, wanted. I, I want to be wanted. Mo was like, no, I want him. Right. Nothing to talk about. I want him. Now, you know what I'm saying? And now the crazy thing is, I, like, I always knew about Rice growing up because my brother played against Rice. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always watched Felipe <laughs> Lopez and all these guys. I'm like, yep, like you know what I'm saying? So growing up, you know the, 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 history. You know the, you know the history, you know the lineage of Rice. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's always been like a rice, rice, right? Like that's, you know what I'm saying? It was a no-brainer for me. I'm like, I'm going to rice. So when you got the, did you play Vars right away or? I was on the team, but I didn't play, like I, 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 didn't, I didn't play a lot right away. Mm-hmm. Not my freshman year, because you got to understand. My freshman year, we had Andre Barrett. Um, shout out Andre, to AB. Shout, shout out, out to, to Andre AB. Barrett. Andre, um, Andre Sweet. Oh, oh, Cow Cuff, oh, wow. like we had, we had a crew. Damn, I forgot. We man, came into, yeah. you know what I'm saying, we came into that season number one in the nation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we like, yeah. I'm coming into a, I'm coming into a, a, a program. Like a squad already, yeah. I'm coming into, a, you know what I'm saying? So, and and I, I, I gotta be honest with it. I'm coming into a, I'm coming into a program that don't really need me like that. Mm-hmm. Cause they already got their own lineage. They already got their own story. They don't really need me like that, but they. They bought me in and was like, all right, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We want you. Right, right. So that's what it was. So they embraced freshman, you. Yeah, they, exactly. They embraced me. Oh, you know what I'm cool. saying? So then, you know, sophomore year was a little bit diff- different story. I, I started getting a lot more playing time. Junior, t- junior, senior year, I mean, the rest is history, pretty much. So now now, we, now I want to get to the good part, you know? So 
college. Mm-hmm. What, did you have, um, you end up going to Kentucky, mm-hmm. but before Kentucky, did you have any other schools that you know that you really like wanted to go to or that you vi- envision yourself um, going to? When, uh, so, all right, it was more of a process, right? So look, growing up, I always had a bucket list of schools. Okay. I had a bucket okay. list. Okay. Temple, Duke, North Carolina, and Kentucky. Okay. Right? Those are my four schools where I'm like, yo, look, if any four of them, you know what I'm saying? Any one of those four, I'm, I'm, I'm out. You don't even need to talk. Let me talk about it. Let me talk about it. Let me talk about it, right? I, 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 I get I get the Duke and the, and the Kentucky Temple. I mean, yeah, White Temple. No, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Don Cheney. Don Cheney. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aside from aside from uh, John Thompson, aside from Georgia, Georgia. 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 Temple, Temple was the school to go to for big men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
So you get the ball at the block and you run it. You, yeah, but we got what I'm saying. Like, but we also had other great players on my team too. Let's, you know, I want to, I want to, yeah. I want to highlight that too. We had Keidre Clark, we had Steve Burke, Gee. we had Gee. Jason Wingate, we had Arturo Dubois, we had Russell Robinson. Like all these guys was on my team. Double R was so cold, yo. Yeah, but if I tell you some stories about him, like you know what I'm saying, anyway. But yeah, but we had it, it wasn't just me on my team, and that, like I'm like. But it was a situation to where I'm like, look, I need that rock. Right, yeah. right. Give it to me, because it, it wasn't it was it wasn't even from a selfish standpoint. Because if you if you if you ask anybody I play with, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but they'll tell they'll probably tell you that I'm the most unselfish player that they played with. Even though I was getting busy, so I was also quality. averaging I was also averaging about three four assists a game too. That's crazy. Right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like I was just, you know I mean, I was a black <laughs> hole that came into me and they upset. No, no. I never popped out. I was giving, I was getting you open shots as well. Mm-hmm. So they were doubling you and you was kicking it up. We, I had kicked you on my team, bro. Shoot, shoot. What? What? That's the greatest. Let, Let the nation is scoring in college. What are we like? The Hall of Fame? Saint Peter's. Yeah, he, NCAA Hall of Fame, Fame and all that. Yeah, like he so got busy. So like when they double me, I'm like, yo, huh? Knock that down, Steve Burke. Scorer, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, but I had, I had, score, I, had I had killers <laughs> on my team. You understand what I'm saying? The same thing we was talking about when I was telling you about the outlets and all that. Like, yo, look, because they used to, I used to grab the rebound, and they used to come up to me like, yo, look, look, I need to. I like, no, we ain't gonna do that. If you, if we want to run, yeah. like you said, we you know say, like you said, we gonna run, then we gonna do it like this. Do I'm gonna grab the rebound and I'm looking up. If you under me, I'm not giving that rock up. We gonna get out and we gonna tell and that that's what it's gonna be. Right. Yeah. So and what that, would you say was like the best experience at Rice and also the worst experience at Rice? The best experience was uh, winning the <clears throat> winning it all. That was the best experience. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't man. say I had a worst experience. I, okay. I I I I don't recall having a bad experience at Rice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, right. <laughs> now I wanted to. But I'm a half glass. I'm, I'm a glass half, half full type. Yeah, half full got technical. See that, so. right? Yeah. Good, good quality as well. So I wanted to ask you. So now you finish off at Rice. You go to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, how was it like going out there? You know, you're you're a kid from the Bronx. You know, and now you're out there. You know, in Kentucky. You know, did you have to? You know, kind of like adjust a little bit. You know, for being yeah, over we're there from New York. You know what I'm saying? We from New York. Of course, it was a slight adjust. I'm used to. I live by the highway, so I'm used to loud, no. loud ass <laughs> eh, 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 and all that. Like I'm saying, that's what I'm accustomed to. I go out there, I'm like it's quiet as a church mouse, baby. I'm over here, like my ears is ringing. My first night, I'm like, what the? Like there's no bodega, nothing's over the past. There's nothing open over past eight or nine o'clock. I'm. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm messed up. Right, 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 right. Trust me, I know, I know. I feel but like one thing you gotta understand is, like, when I was in high school, I was like, yo, look, I'm not staying home. I'm getting out of New York. Right. And why did you feel that way? I felt the pressure. Like, I felt the pressure. I felt the pressure. And, oh, it, and it, oh, it was okay. probably, it was probably, it was, I felt the pressure of home, but I, 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 I don't know. It was something about New York that I, 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 I had to escape. And I think I think it had something to do with I think it had something to do part of it had to do with the way that they treated Pat Ewing. Mm. Like they like they like really like at the end of his career they treated him crazy. Typical New York that's what New York fans do. This is crazy. And I'm like I'm like so I'm like, yo, I gotta get out of New York. You're like New York, they New York is it like New York is ruthless. I gotta get up out of here, yo. So as a top prospect being maybe held as the next big man, so they mm-hmm. probably, you know, mentioned your name, Kareem, Pat Ewing, and then your name came up and maybe it got too overwhelming for you or? No, no, no. I don't think, no, it wasn't overwhelming for me. What I'm saying is, no, no, not at all. Okay. What I'm saying is there's a lot of things in New York that are distractions that will Dist- there's a yeah. lot of distract. There's a lot yeah. of things in New York that will um, stunt your mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I, I couldn't be a part of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, Yo, you I, you hit it like yeah. so on the money when you talking about distractions, yeah, you know, and like you be like people don't understand. So I was I so I went away upstate New York. It was freaking thirty minutes away from Canada, you know, but. I understand, I'm understanding what you're saying because I just I felt that way as well. Like I had to get out of New York because I also felt that there was more, you know, than just of where I lived. You know, there was a lot. There had to be more. So not to cut you no, off, no, but that, that's another thing as well. You gotta understand. From a young age, I started traveling. See on these AAU circuits. So you got to see. so my my what perspective. What did you run with? Not, don't um, forget your time, but. I played with the I played with the Gauchos, mm -hmm. and I also played with the Ravens. Okay. This, Artie. Yeah, I played with Artie Green. Like, you gotta understand, I grew up with Artie mm -hmm. Green. Was, like he was probably my first coach. Ag, good guy. Ag, that's my that's my guy. That's my AG, so, good, like, don't you gotta understand? Like, when you 13, 14 years old, and you traveling, and you going to Florida, and you going to you know what I'm saying? You playing in the Nationals against teams from Memphis and doing all these things. Your perspective is not that that of a typical fourteen year old. Mm -hmm. Your, so your perspective like now changes because right, it's it's similar to that of an adult because my like you know what I'm saying I'm not thinking just New York City. I'm not even thinking just the Bronx. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm way out the Bronx at mm -hmm. this point. Right. So mm -hmm. now my ambitions, now my you know what I'm saying what I want, you know what I'm saying what what I want for myself, it changes. It becomes you know what I'm saying the bar is is raised a lot more. Because I've I've had all of the, all of these experiences, and that is what catered. That's that's what also went into my uh, decision making process when going to college. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I, I took all these trips to these different states, and you want me to stay home? Now I'm out of here, yo. You bugging? I see what's out there. You wild, like I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all yeah. yeah, can stay here if y'all want to. I'm gone. So I'm assuming. So once you became um, pro, a pro, and you was traveling. You was comfortable with that because absolutely, I was groomed already. I was groomed. I know because you know I, 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 that's funny because I I know a lot of players. You know, even uh, even my boy um, James James Feldig when he first signed in Spain, I lived with him. You know, and and that was kind of like a tough. You know, just adjusting. You know, so for you, you know, to say, you know. Because you traveled, you know, at a young age, you know, to these different states, you know, it opened you up more, you know, to say, hey, there's more than my surroundings. And Absolutely. I think that's where a lot of people, you know, lack, you know, they, they tend to think that their surrounding is the only thing, you know, that there is when, you know, that when there's so much more, you know, when you get out of that comfort, you know, level and you've been able to do that, you know. And I know it wasn't something that it was, you know, easy, you know, so... I think that's dope. How was it playing with uh, playing for Toby Smith? It was good. Um, well, playing for him as a coach. Yeah. <laughs> it was an experience. I would say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was an experience. Um, it was something that you know. It, it was just an experience. It was just an experience. Yeah, it was an experience. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um. Damn, who else? Who else you play with? That yeah. you would know. Yeah, um, Kentucky back then. Um, I played with uh, my freshman year. I played with Cliff Hawkins, Gerald Fitch, mm, okay. um, Eric Daniels, Chuck Hayes. Chuck Hayes. He was in the league for a long time. Yeah, yeah. for a long time, was, for a little bit. Was he still? Was he shooting free throws like that? Isn't Chuck? What? <laughs> That's the crazy thing. He wasn't. Really. Not like not the not the did, did the love. <laughs> not, not that. So he did. So he did do that. that with the Rockets. I'm like. So he didn't do that in college. No, not that, not to that extent. No, <laughs> no, that looked no, crazy. Not. Yo, that's that's interesting, yo, because I'm like, that that yo, looked crazy. Oh. Yeah, but I, I I I don't remember him doing that. But <laughs> you don't remember him doing yeah. that. <laughs> but to get, um, give you a perspective, like my then my sophomore year, we had three All Americans come in: Ramel Bradley, um, Joseph Crawford, and uh, Rajah Rondo, and um, who's the fourth? Uh, Randolph Morris. Randolph Morris. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, Ramel Bradley uh, went over there from Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. yeah. Also, you, so you actually got to play with Randolph. I yeah, wasn't sure that you did.
I had another seven footer that that's like my brother, like you know what I'm saying, like my brother. Every time we see him, it's always love. Big fella, um, big Wu, big Wu Kash Obju. Um, you probably won't know the name, but you know what I'm saying that's that's my guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheree Thomas, like those, like those were my like. Dude, dude, Those are my dude. dudes. Like, I mean, uh, Wu, like they, they got families now and all that. Yeah. Like Wu called, I spoke to Wu the other day, yo, look, and he, I mean, he still give me words of encouragement, different things like that. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I cherish those. I right. cherish those because, like, those are my guys. Like, we went through wars. Like, we went through wars. Like, not even with, not even with each other. Just, just through, life. Just life and issues mm -hmm. and and things on the team and that, like it was. If, yeah, it was crazy. But those like that, like you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. those names I mentioned, those are my guys. That's dope. The the did, uh, no, I was gonna ask you, man, did you ever did you ever like dream as a kid that you'll be able to experience, you know, meet, you know, the people that you met, you know, experience Hell the no. things that you experienced just a kid from the Bronx, man, who you just wanted to do something because your bro, you 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 saw your brother doing it, and you kind of like wanted to be around him. That did you ever think that That's you'll come as far? That's what it was for me. Sure. That's what it was. It was something like I just did it because you, you know what I'm saying. I just did it because you did it. Like I looked up to you. Like you was my, you know what I'm saying. Right. Like I just did it because, and you gotta understand. Like where I'm from, they don't. I'm not, look, I'm not saying my, my story is unique. Let's not get it twisted. It is unique. Oh, everybody's story is unique. Uh, right, but I, I'm saying, I know everybody unique. came from somewhere. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm right. from, from that perspective. But you don't, like, some some, some dudes don't go pa get past their block. They don't get out the neighborhood. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. That's, 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 the, the, that's, the, that's, that's the fact. That's, that's the reality, reality of the situation. <clears throat> they don't get out. Let me tell you, man. And so, like, when I, you know what I'm saying? When I've been on these places and I come back and I look, I'm like, damn, like, it's overwhelming a little bit because I'm like, yo, like I was fortunate. I was the fortunate one to actually have Experience. these experiences, yeah. like, and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? No, nah, that that that's great, man. Cause uh, I always wonder, you know, like, do you ever t do you ever tend to take a step back and kind of like look at it all, like everything that you know, like, you know, yeah, you know, everything that I've done, you know, like, damn, like. People like people that was for the longest I didn't. For the longest, it was always, what's your next thing? What's your next thing? What's the what's your next thing? What's the next? And then I had to like as I got older, I had to slow down and realize like, look, Gary, you 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 achieved a lot, right? You know what I'm saying? Because right. what all right, one thing you gotta understand for the longest, it was basketball, 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 nothing else. But what you have to understand is there were things bubbling up inside me that wasn't basketball related that I was also good at, good as good at as well. Right. But I had to ignore it because basketball was this. You know what I'm saying? Metaphorically, it was the breadwinner. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh. I mean, was it was it could it could it have been used as a tool to get you to those other things like those? You know what I'm saying? But see, that's to make the thing, those other like, things greater. Okay, to answer your question, to, what it was is like what I always saw basketball f was for. I saw it as a vehicle, right? It was a vehicle to put myself and my family in a better situation, right? Which and everybody is very got that. Too. Everybody got that that ambition, like, look, right. yeah, you know, I'm gonna get my mom's this. I'm gonna do this for my mom's, like that, like, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, like, of course, I had those same things. But I, it was also look. I'm gonna go to school. Like that. Those, these are things you're told. Like go to your main. Use it as a vehicle to pay for school. And that's 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 exactly what I used it for. Right. Right. Like um, my mom's, my parents didn't have to pay for tuition since I was in the seventh grade. After seventh grade, they didn't pay for a damn thing. So that's what I used it for, like, you know what I'm saying? That's what it was, you know what I'm saying? That's what it was useful for. Um, in regards to, I know I'm being long-winded. No, that's listen, listen, no, no, you're not being long-winded, like, this is good, like, yeah, people that, need to, like, like, to hear that because it's and that, like, two that's, points. Yeah, that's what it was for me, so, like, you asked me, like, 
I tell them, like, when I when I speak to kids, I'm like, and I, I give them that, that's the best part of my intro. I'm like, look, the game of basketball, I give them this verbatim. The game of basketball has been very gracious to me, and it's allowed me to do a lot of things that I probably wouldn't be able to do without the game. That's the fact. Mm-hmm. I'm not, even though I say it all the time, that's a that's an absolute fact. But that's not the only thing that identifies you. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. But for the longest, that's it was the something that I had to stick to. For the longest, it was something that I, you know what I'm saying? Anything else was discouraged. Mm-hmm. For the longest. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? No, 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 I feel and that, And that, that's what it was. So for the long, now, the shit. Uh, so, uh, and Shadar, man, we was, uh, we was talking about how basketball has led you, you know? You know, to try some different things, you know, or, or making you more comfortable with, you know? Exploiting yourself, you know, and finding you know different passions, you know. You said there was, you said there was no, other I stuff would. bubbling inside, inside of you. Right. Wow. Wow. Ba- basketball was the breadwinner. While you knew basketball could take your family to the next level, you knew it was other interests bubbling inside of you. So what I'm trying right, to say, about other interests? Okay. Go ahead. No, you're right, but it wasn't because of basketball. Though. It was you got like, like, like I told you before, I was just a regular kid growing up. You right. Know what I'm saying prior to playing basketball, so. I was that dude, I, I mean, I danced, I, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, I, I just tried different stuff because I like to do it, like, I was a real man, I was a really regular kid, I, I wrote rhymes at 10 years old, I did, you know what I'm saying, I did certain things, to where, mm-hmm. you feel what I'm saying, like, I just like to have fun, like, that was me, and if you ask anybody that knew me growing up, and they act, you tell them what I'm doing now, they're like, yeah, that's, that's yeah, Gary, that's what, that's, that ain't that, that ain't that mill, but what it was is because, because they saw me as a big dude, all that other stuff was discouraged, and it was like, yo, look, play, you know what I'm saying, do this, I want, you know what I'm saying, you gotta do this. And that's what it was for me. But it wasn't, you know what I'm saying, and it wasn't because of basketball, but because, you know what I'm saying, as I was playing basketball, these things started to manifest itself as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that, right. that's pretty much what it was for me. So how did uh we spoke about it a little bit uh before we when we went back on. So how did uh how did salsa dancing come into play? I uh <laughs> What intrigued you? Was it a girl? Puerto Rican church. Hold on, hit me. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm gonna tell you the story. I'm telling you the story, like, I was Puerto playing Rican in the minor church. league at the time. Okay. I was playing in the minor league at the time and I came home after the season ended. Mm-hmm. So I went to go check my mom's real quick. And so, you know, she's like, look, you know, I'm, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking the salsa class, you know, they, they just started up. I'm like, all right, you know, that's cool. She's like, it's going real well. I'm like, all right, no doubt. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cool. But now I'm looking at my wife because I know something is coming up. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know she's going to want me to do something, right? So right. I'm like, all right, cool. So like, we were like, what's up? Yeah, you know, they got they got classes coming up, you know what I'm saying? That I'm like, okay, okay, like, like come out with it already, like, you know what I mean? If you want to join, I'm like, look, I don't want to join. <laughs> but if you want me to do it, I'll do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's mom's, like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. right. If, t- if you want me to do it, I will do it. I'll pull up. I'll pull up. She's like, all right, well, they got a class coming up. I'm like, all right, fine, sign me up. Right. She want to sign me up. Anyway. So the first day... I'm late as a mug, right? <laughs> Class started singing, I pop up like 6.15, 6.20. But yo, fam, let me tell you, yo. I look left, I look right. I said, shit, I gotta come sign one more class, yo. School <laughs> I'm like, hey, yo. I need to be in this class. I need to be in this class. I need to be in this class, man. I'm like, yo. Are you serious? Okay, okay. Oh, hell yeah, I'm, I'm coming back. So it started, oh yeah, of course, yeah, because I like the, you know what I mean, the scenery you and like all the that. Atmosphere, like the atmosphere, the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah the atmosphere, atmosphere was a nice little vibe the, and the, all that. The good like. vibes there, yeah, 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 yeah. It was good vibes. Of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you feel me? So yeah. It, so it started, you know, it started like that. So how long, how long you been doing it now? Since Seven that, years. Since I've been that going that first since 2012. 
I started June 6, 2012. June 5th. Whatever that Tuesday was. June 2012. <laughs> 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 that Tuesday was. June 5th or June 6th. Whatever it was, 2012, that's when I started. Because I was trying to get back in that Thursday class. Niggas <laughs> 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 like said, that's how I know. I was trying to get in that Thursday. Nice. I was Man, like, yeah, I need to get in that. That's the, all right, so you're doing salsa. Mm -hmm. So... Going back a little bit, you said um, you was writing, you know, rhymes at 10 years old. Right. So fast forward to now, I know that's what you're doing now. You're, you're getting you're getting more back into music. Right? I'm doing it. I'm doing that as well. I'm yes. doing right, that as right. well. Correct. So how, what that made, what I'm trying to say is, what made you say, I, I want to do this as well? Like, I want to, even though I did this back then, I was younger, but now I want to like really like, Pursue it? Yeah, really pursue it. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to give just give you a quick background. No, right? no, no, go ahead. Um, I wrote my first rhyme when I was 10 years old, but I old, like I said, I got, I got an older brother. So my older brother was, you got to say, I'm from the era of the TDK tapes and put them in and dub, dub and put in, you know what I'm saying, you press record for Hot 97 whenever they got the freestyle, you know what I mean, Monday night, right, Monday night right. mixtape, all that, like, you know what I'm saying, that's my era. But prior to that, I have a brother, you know what I'm saying? My brother is older than me, so he he was, he, in, in terms of hip-hop, he was in that in that golden era of hip-hop, of the Red Alerts, of the, you know what I'm saying, the Rock Kims and, you know what I'm saying, all that. Mm -hmm. So through him, I got a, I got a solid history of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the thing that, that, that intrigued me about hip-hop. Another thing that intrigued, you know what I'm saying? So that, 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 that's one thing that intrigued me about it. From that, I started to like, I just like the way words rhyme. Hmm. I just like the way words rhyme. And I, I like the way it made me feel when words rhyme. Hmm. It was that simple for me when I was that, when I was that young. Hmm. Then it got to the point where, you know what I'm saying, my mom's bought me a McMillan's Dictionary and she's, you know what I'm saying, I'm reading that joint front to back. Wow. Front to back, I'm going over different words and all that. Right, so you asked me the question, what, what was, I'm sorry, what was the question? I'm just fascinated that you was reading the dick. That, that, yeah, that's I was. I, I, you gotta say I, I just love words, right? Um, oh yeah, yeah. You asked me um, what uh, what made. Oh, so high school, I was writing rhymes. And if you ask if you ask people I went to high school with, they'll probably say like, "Yo, Gary, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was just rhymes was up to par back then, <laughs> <laughs> right?" I went to college. I went to college. You know what I'm saying? I, and I still continued it. You know what I'm saying? Even some of my teammates, you know what I'm saying? We was rhyming um, or whatever. Um, after college, that's when I realized I was getting nice. Okay. He was like, I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep on doing this. Because I, right? What made me want to pursue it and go along is as I'm, as I'm spitting these rhymes to other people, people go from, you know what I'm saying? They go from like, all right, that, that's dope to... I ain't gonna front. You could you could really do this if you really want to do it. The okay. tone change. Right. I'm starting to see the tone change from person to person. Like, wait, wait, yo, Gary, if you really try, if you really want to do it, you could really do this. Eyebrows raised and all that. Right. So I'm like, all right, that, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, bet, like, shit, like. Makes you want to take it. Yeah, it makes me want to, it makes me want to go harder now. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Man, that's. And that damn man, to answer your question, that that's what it was. It was, it was people constantly come up to me like, "Yo, Gary, you, you, you got some, you got some stuff, bro. You, you might wanna, you know what I'm saying? You might you might wanna pursue this if you, you know what I'm saying? And that that that's what it was for me. Yo, man, Gary, you're you're really interest, you're an interesting ass person, man. On the low, man, like Big you're guys. like, I think that I think that's dope because I think so many people get caught up thinking. I only have to do one thing or I only can have a certain passion or love, you know, uh, for one thing. And it seems like you've been able to, to find, you know, passion in, in more than one thing. And I think that's dope because a lot of people struggle with that. Right. Um, I was fortunate. And, and sorry, to, no, not right, to cut right. you off. Um, so what you said, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, look, some people don't find one thing that they're passionate about. I was fortunate to find three. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. So. That's big. That's big. Damn, that's I big, even, man. I, I was about to say, what What would you tell the youth? But that right there is like, that's, I think right th 
that right there is is crucial. Well, one thing one thing I will say that's that's interesting about that, and 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 what I was gonna commend is that it seems like you never you, you never lost your. I don't. I don't want to say inner child because that might make you sound immature. But you never. You never lost your inner self. You never lost that connection to your childhood and what really made you. You happy, right? And 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 that's and that's why you able to explore these things and you know that they're great because a lot of a lot of uh, this generation now is just about doing what they think other people are gonna like or think it was right. gonna make them money. Right. But you you never lost those passions that you knew were there from when you were young. A young child, so it it it, 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 it fuels you more to, to pursue it and see what's going on because even if it doesn't go nowhere, I, I feel like you're just having fun with it. It's yeah. just your inner. It's just your, it's just the inner child in yeah, you. Yeah. You never lost that imagination. You never lost that. So right. it, it, it's really no loss or, or gain to you. You're just doing what you want to do, right, in, right. In, in in a sense. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's big to point out to the to the youth to. To the youth and the younger generation, that no matter what you're doing on, a, you know what I'm saying, just do things that make you happy. And I think you're a great example of somebody that's just doing things that make, make you happy. happy man. Something that a lot of people struggle with. Yeah. Right. right, and that, you know what? It, part of it was me being a rebel. Like I'm, you know what I'm saying, like I don't like when you tell me I can't do something, and you know what I'm saying, I like. I'm going to do it. Dude. I'm going to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So when you tell, you know, you should stick to basketball. Nah, nah, nah. Don't leave that, leave that music alone. What you mean? Like, right. this is the thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I know how I feel about it. And you want right. to tell me I can't? Nah, I'm doing it. Now, I'm not, like, I'm not a, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to also show you that I'm going to do the basketball shit. Right. I can also I'm gonna do, do this that. Thing. And right. I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the, that's the crazy. That's the. And the part of it, like, if you want to pursue this, especially if you're in my position, you gotta be sort of a rebel, because right. if you leave it up to somebody else, oh, it's about basketball. And that's it. Don't worry about nothing else. Look, put that ball in that basket, and it's you know what I mean, it. and that's it. No music, nah, nah, nah. Leave that up for the rappers, nah. You, you had that, nah. And I'm like, damn that. I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out this mold. We not going. You know what I'm saying? I'm seven foot back. I get busy on tracks and I get busy on the dance floor. Big That's facts. it. Right. <laughs> Big facts. Point blank period. <laughs> right. right. You heard my man. man. They get busy on tracks. Man. They get busy, busy on, on the, the dance, dance floor. Now, if you ask you me, I'm saying, like, cats I went to school, again, like, they'll tell you, like, these are things that are consistent with things I've been doing my whole life. So it's nothing new. It's nothing new. Like, in rice parties, I used to be, I'm saying, I used to be on the wall. Hey! 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 I used to be, oh, Chicks dance, dancing with your knees. Yeah, right. But I'm getting <laughs> low though. I'm no, getting, I'm about look, to say I'm getting low though. It's like yo, God, we getting low. <laughs> I'm getting low though. Why? Yo, no. ask anybody I went to school, man. Like, yo, facts. He was in when he was in that rice party getting low, man. Big word. Oh man. He was in that rice party getting low. I was in that rice. Yo, my and my legs. Yeah, you know I man. My legs strong too. Like doing them, doing them. What's your coach? Hey, coach, is that how you doing? Hey, hey. I'm holding on to teammates like hey. Yo, nigga Gary said, man, I had strong legs. Word. I had strong legs. Facts. Man. Nah, I respect um, that. So, man, before we wrap this up, Gary, I wanted to ask you, man, what, besides, you know, I, you hit a key, key, key point, you know, with finding, you know, things that you're passionate about, mm-hmm. but what else do you have, you know, to tell the youth, you know, that, you know, that are hoopers, you know, that 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 are still trying to figure out, you know, what they're trying to do with themselves, you know, like your your journey, you know, you haven't you've been able to, to see a lot of things and experience a lot of things. So from your experiences, you know, like what will you be able to, you know, kinda of tell the youth? If you're gonna hoop, go hard. Right? You don't have to necessarily hoop to go to the league, but you can hoop as a vehicle to put yourself and your family in a better situation. It ain't got to be, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It could be to pay for your t- um, education so that your parents don't have to. It could be, you know what I'm saying, to just expose you to different things so that your mind is now 
your mind is now exposed to different experiences. Like, you just use that as a vehicle for all these things. If you're going to hoop. And I got a special message for those, like, you got one, which you, one thing you got to understand, there might be, you know what I'm saying, like, it just because you might be 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", you're, you're, you're a young cat, you don't necessarily have to. But that's not what you put, you know, that's not what you're passionate about. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if you if mm -hmm. you that tall and you don't want to hoop, that's okay. It's all right. That's okay. Mm-hmm. People on your live probably look like, yo, Gary, you bugger, but I'm dead ass, though. That's okay. Don't let nobody tell you, like, yo, nah, you supposed to be, no. If you, that's not what you want to do, that's not what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, if you, that, you know what I'm saying? If you 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", and you don't want to hoop, but you forced to hoop, it's not going to be as passionate as somebody who really want to do it. Yeah. Big fans. So why am I doing this? If I'm not passionate about it, that don't other, make no sense. There's other sports. You could be, you could play. It don't even gotta be sports. If you want to be a painter, Big you be fact. a painter. Right. Do that. If that's what you want to do, do it. But don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't play this game if you ain't gonna be, uh, be passionate about it and go hard. Because to be honest with you, when I realized um, I was passionate about it is when I was going, you know what I'm saying? Like you go through certain experiences and I'm like, I, I gotta love this because if I'm going through this and I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta love this game if I'm going through this to do this shit because I'd have been quick right. if I if I wasn't that pa pa passionate about it. Cause we all go through stuff. You know what I'm saying? Especially with this game. This game will try you. Yeah. This life game will life try will try you. you. Huh? Life, will, life will try. Life you. will try you. Life will try. You. This game especially will try you. Right. Yeah. I I I I feel that. I feel that. You know what I'm saying? Man. Um. Again. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Because uh, we need conversations like this, man. Just, you know, people that experienced, you know, life. You know, uh, it's a roller coaster. It's up and down, you know, but you have been able to find joy in just being you and doing what, you know, feels right to you. Not what other people think or other people say is what you say. You know, and keep saying that's big because, <clears throat> like what you said um, earlier, people just want to do what everybody is doing and not really doing what they, you know, what they want to do, you know, what they actually want to do, you know, they just want to follow, you know, what, the crowd. Um, so I commend you for that, you know. Again, I appreciate you, you know, for taking the time out your busy schedule to come kick it with us, man. Um, yeah, man. Um, that's a wrap, man, and uh, appreciate you, champ. Okay, but, I appreciate you having me. No, no, we need Any final thoughts before we get into your bars? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because I need my... Yeah, I need that. I need <laughs> that, champ. Yes, I, don't I know need that, true. champ. Yeah, yeah. Bars. I need the bars and the picture, and we good to go. Slang like boomerang, I'm right back. 20 cc's of Ray Charles and Mike Jack is in my right pen. I get excited when the beat drops, it gives me a minus pen. It gives me a chance to write lyrical Viking then. Presence of wealth, the footwork of Fred Stan. I'm Godson, did you catch the glare? I'm a G, I don't D when the sun is near. Yeah, I play ball, but you dudes need to grow up here. I'm from the land of the giants, it ain't more there. So if you scare the heights, don't go up there. Seven foot is what you think you wanna be. Till you gasp for air and find out you can't breathe. Breathe, I told you in 03 to breathe. My bad, 04, excuse me. Leave, leave the fuck alone, cause your luck's up. It's Big Gary in the house, what the fuck's up? <laughs> <laughs>